Last year, the so-called Western powerful countries were forcing Africans and some other countries in other parts of the world to switch from carbon emission energy sources to renewable energies as soon as possible to reduce climate change. More than 120 world leaders gathered in Glasgow, Scotland for the first day of the UN summit. The conference is billed as a last best hope to keep global warming in check. Leaders hope to agree on global targets for reducing carbon emissions. Glasgow must be the kickoff of a decade, a decade of ambition and innovation to preserve our shared future. Humanity has long since run down the clock on climate change. It's one minute to midnight on that doomsday clock and we need to act now. But this is cool. It emits more carbon emissions than any other fossil fuel when it is burned. Since 2012, most European countries stopped using it as power generation. And now, in 2022, almighty Europe is going back to the burning of coal because Russia has cut off their gas supply. And if they don't go back to coal, they are going to experience the worst winter ever. But the West is still trying to enforce colonization, this time of a different kind, carbon colonization. Europe has announced a shift to coal. The same Europe that could not stop lecturing others on the use of coal, the same Europe that kept browbeating developing countries on climate goals, has very conveniently announced its shift to coal because they need energy. The war in Ukraine has exposed Europe's vulnerabilities. The EU sanctioned Russia, so Russia hit back by cutting gas supplies to Europe. And now Europe is looking for coal. Germany has fired up its coal plants again. The Netherlands has removed limits on production from such plants, from coal plants. Denmark could do the same. Italy has declared a state of alert on energy. Italian energy plants have been hoarding coal for months now. They might soon put it to use. And this is the same time Ghana and most African countries are also doing the right thing in terms of fighting climate change. Meaning Africa is winning the game again this time around. Because the government of Ghana seeks to achieve a net zero carbon emission by 2070. And they are investing more and more into renewable energy sources. Let me add that Ghana has set a target of 2070 to fully transition from fossil fuels to renewable energy. Although nuclear energy is not renewable, but in terms of climate change, nuclear energy production does not release greenhouse gases. So the government of Ghana is going to add nuclear energy to its energy mix this year, according to Dr. Stephen Yemua, who is the executive director of Nuclear Power Ghana. The commitment of government to implementing measures for a long-term provision of sustainable, reliable, and affordable low carbon emission power using nuclear power technology is to enhance the competitiveness of our industries with a positive projection of the African continental free trade area. But wait, before Doctor continues, we would like to share with you why Ghana is eager to add nuclear power to its energy mix. And before we get into that, please support us by liking this video and also subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for liking. Now, let's get into it. Modern society is so much dependent on the use of electrical energy that it has become part of our lives. The energy may be needed as heat, as cold, as light, and in many other forms. In fact, electrical energy is now the basic necessity for the economic development of a country. Therefore, electrical energy has played an important role in the building up of present day civilization because the availability of a huge amount of energy in modern times have resulted in a shorter working day, a healthier and more balanced diet, a better transportation facilities, a higher agricultural and industrial productions. But in this video, we are focusing on the higher agricultural and industrial production because that is the reason why Ghana is now going to add nuclear power energy to its energy mix. Ghana has a vibrant power generation sector compared to most African countries. The country also exports power to some African countries like Togo, Benin and Burkina Faso. And their main sources of energy are hydro, thermal generation which is fueled by crude oil, natural gas and diesel and other renewable energy sources like solar. And now they want to add nuclear energy to their energy 
sources. And this has been the country's dream since the year 1961. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, who was the first president of the Republic of Ghana, started it and finally they are going to do it now. And they are doing it for a reason. And the reason is the African Continental Free Trade Area. Yes, because now there are over 230 factories under the government of Ghana's One District, One Factory Initiative. And other factories are also operating on their own. And they are producing products from the country's natural resources in the country for the African and the global market. And we all know that factories require much affordable and reliable energy for production. And apart from the factories, electric vehicles are also going to increase in the country in some few years to come. And many other things are also in the pipeline. So that is why Ghana is finally adding nuclear power to its energy mix. Let's hear their progress so far from Dr. Steven Yemua, who is the executive director of Nuclear Power Ghana. Nuclear Power Ghana has a special collaboration with AGI and its annual summit. We are pleased with the transforming prospects created by other collaborations, especially that of AFTA, for Ghanaian businesses and trade. The commitment of government to implementing measures for a long-term provision of sustainable, reliable, and affordable low-carbon emission power using nuclear power technology is to enhance the competitiveness of our industries with a positive projection of the African continental free trade area. It is therefore appropriate that we provide a brief update of the strides made in Ghana's effort towards the construction of the first nuclear power plant on three major fronts. First, Honorable Minister, following the issuance of requests for information to vendor countries through the Ministry of Energy last year, 15 responses consisting of six large reactors and nine small modular reactors were received. The responses have been evaluated by the Technical Committee and the report submitted to the Ministry of Energy for Cabinet's attention. We are hopeful that government will take a decision on the most suitable technology and the vendor or strategic partner to partner Nuclear Power Ghana for the construction of the first nuclear power plant by the end of this year. With respect to the location for the construction, Nuclear Power Ghana has completed the analysis of field and historical data and ranking of four candidate sites that were identified during phase one. We are currently drafting the report for submission to the Nuclear Regulatory Authority by the end of the year for their review and approval. Honorable Minister, we continue to make great strides in our stakeholder engagement, candidate sites, community outreach, local schools involvement, and education programs. We have also had fruitful engagement with some universities for nurturing and development of the right human capital for the nuclear power project. In its full course, the academic learning institutions will begin foundational courses for both technical and non-technical persons to support the nuclear program and the project. Honorable Minister, we continue to partner and equip our media professionals with the needed information to accelerate public social acceptance licenses. In recent weeks, we have organized two separate workshops for the media, regional managers and selected editors and are very confident of an improved understanding of nuclear power technology and safety issues. Many of the developed nations, except very few, attained the highest point of their industrialization with nuclear power, an electricity generation technology highly known for its deep industrial involvement, both directly and indirectly. The infrastructural issues related to nuclear power program and projects have strict compliance guidelines with associated international standards, regulations, and best practices governing it, thus making it the most regulated industry in the electricity sector. We wish to assure industry players and Ghanaians that NPG is committed to strict compliance with the requirements and rules in the safe application of nuclear technology and the safety of our people and the environment. 
Thank you very much for watching this episode. Let us know your thoughts and suggestions inside the comment section below. My name is Sharif Haruna. Please subscribe, like, have a joyful life and see you in our next video. Makrao.